and this is my opinion, I think that they're right. I think the guys that form the inflammatory index are correct, and I'm gonna show you why now. So they have done too many studies to list where they have looked at people's inflammatory index, diet index. So they looked at, you know, what type of diet are people eating and then what type of disease outcomes are they having? And they found the exact same list that we found with the inflammation results. So kidney, lung, and liver disease increased for people eating inflammatory or who had bad markers on this index. Heart disease went up. It makes us age faster at a cellular level, development of frailty, increased risk of falls, impaired memory, cognitive dysfunction, mental health issues, lower sleep quality, risk of the potpourri of cancers that we're talking about, prostate, esophageal, stomach, pancreatic, colorectal, rectal, kidney, bladder, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Again, associated with a 75% greater chance of getting cancer and a 67% greater chance of dying of it, okay? So they kind of found the same thing, whether you're measuring the CRP in the people's blood, all this stuff happens if the CRP is high, or if you're measuring the index of what foods they're eating and they're getting that bad inflammatory index score from the index. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, and that's where it kind of like started to be like, okay, maybe they're right. So I now wanna go into like, why do the anti-inflammatory foods work? And then we're gonna talk about why the inflammatory foods work, especially saturated fat, because that's the one I would love to have that be like, get some saturated fat going. Oh, get some eggs going. 